You know, we're going to talk about the kingdom story. Uh, you know, I, I think, as I was thinking about that, I've been in this, I've, I know I don't look this old, but I have to keep saying that because I'm sure you keep thinking I'm much younger than I am. But I've been in this thing for 49 years now. I followed Jesus for 49 years, and I remember what I felt like when I first said yes to Jesus, and I thought, this is really good. And I'm telling you, I can honestly say this, even for the, all the painful things and good things, that Jesus is better, way better than I thought back then. The kingdom of God is much bigger and exciting than I ever thought back then. After all these years, it's just grown in understanding how good the good news that we're talking about the kingdom is. And to me, one of the things that was, I had this, as I was praying this morning, I just had this picture of what it was like for me to come to Jesus. And the best way I could describe it is, without knowing it, I was on the streets. I was a street kid, without a home, surviving, working through my own anxiety, trying to make it okay, exhausted most of the time, not able to focus on anybody but myself. And somehow I had someone who loved me, who asked me, you want to come in the house? And I came in the house, and I had this, and I came to find out this person loved me, and all of a sudden I was part of the family, and that was amazing. And that's how I used to think about it, like how amazing that I've actually been, Jesus has actually invited me in and forgiven me and cleansed me and allowed me to experience him and love me, and I can stay with him for eternity, and I'm part of this family, all these things I just loved, right? And that was good news. But you know what really became even this better news? It's when I learned that I could do things in Jesus' name and participate in the things that he was doing. I mean, so the good news is that Jesus comes to us, but the amazing thing is not only that, he comes through us. Now, think about that. The creator of the universe has decided to come through me. <laughs> that's amazing. And that's really what we're talking about when we're talking about the kingdom of God. I think Danielle did a great job. Today we're going to be talking about the kingdom demonstrated. Danielle talked last week about the kingdom proclaimed. I thought she did a great job. And, uh, but what we're going to talk about, these two go hand in hand. We're going to focus on demonstration primarily, but we're going to actually show how these two go hand in hand, the proclamation of the kingdom and the demonstration of the kingdom. She had a great example. You haven't heard it yet. It's on Netflix. Remember that example? One of the best examples I had about how she was, when she used to go to Blockbusters and ridiculous Blockbusters, and then we had Netflix who mailed you the, the DVDs in the mail. Anybody old enough to remember that, right? That was unbelievable. And so Danielle went around telling everybody, you've got you to understand this. They deliver it to your home, right? So she was excited and telling the good news of Netflix, right? And trying to get them out of the darkness of the kingdom of blockbusters into the kingdom of light of Netflix, right? She was proclaiming, she was saying, this has worked. It really works. It's, not, it's true, it's true, Right? And, I, I, and she, she talked about how she wasn't a person who was like the expert in the proclaiming side. I think I could top her, especially if I look back at when I first became a Christian. That was my big fear, is telling people that <laughs> I love Jesus, right? I, I, right? If you guys know me, you've been through my phases, the old people. I remember when one of our members, Paul Hawk, told me about this thing called Google. No one knew about Google. There wasn't any ads on it, just this little white screen with colored letters. And I started searching things. And Google was amazing. And guess what? You all heard about Google. I figured out a way of bringing it into every conversation. And then there was Google Earth. How many of you guys went to the Google Earth stage with me? All right. You know, you, I'm saying, you can go anywhere. You can spin the globe. You can zoom in, you know. I went through my street level phase. I've, all kinds of things, right? <laughs> Lately, my wife has said, I do not want to hear about artificial intelligence anymore. <laughs> and quite honestly, I'm tired now because I was, I was in the beginning, before anybody was all the news broadcasts, I was like, this is going to change the world, right? <clears throat> or what good movie you saw, or what sports team you love. Right? Pretty easy, right? The question I have, though, as we start out is like, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, 
Why is it so much harder when it means so much more? And we believe it so much more. Why is it so much harder? I mean, for me, uh, you know, I shared this with the men's community about how scared I was when I first came to Christ in my, when I was 16 to tell my friends. And, and so, you know, after I became, fall, decided out loud, I spoke, I want to follow you, Jesus. All of a sudden, the kingdom came, and I, I sensed, I, I'm in, I'm, out, I'm in. I love Jesus, I'm going to commit my life to him. And, and strangely enough, as mo- some of you know, is that, that same day, I went, my brother took me to church that, next, that very same day, because it was in the middle of the night, and I, that same day I went to the church, and I liked it, which is definitely God. <laughs> and, uh, and so I, I'm at church, and it's going so well, and I still remember very specifically, I'm backing, I, can, I have a very visual, um, I, I remember scenes. I'm backing out in my Mustang, ready to go home, driving home. And as I'm backing out, I, the thought occurs to me, I have to tell my friends. None of my friends knew Jesus at all. Uh, and they had no idea I had an interest in Jesus. So it wasn't except for maybe my agnostic friend. He, we talked every once in a while. And so here's what I did. I prayed this prayer. It, it was like, if you're a small child who gives you permission to pull out that hanging baby tooth, they're shaking and say, can I, can I help you? No. Can, we need to get this tooth out. Do you agree? Yes. How do you do it? Just do whatever you have to do, right? And so you fake them out and yank it out or whatever you do, right? That was me. And so I said, I said to Jesus, make me do this. <laughs> and I remember kind of feeling like, I don't know if I should have said that, right? But it was interesting because I actually went back to church that evening and at the end of the time, I had this na- na- nagging because the week's coming. It was in the summertime, so I didn't know how I was going to tell my friends. And so I remember thinking, I don't know what to do here. And they all wanted to go out to Pizza Hut. This is no kidding. We were in the parking lot, and I could see Pizza Hut. It's right down the road. So a complete area of town that I wasn't a part of. This was good. And they go, no, let's go to uh, the Pizza Hut across the river where I am a part of, the pizza that I hung around with my friends at. So I'm thinking, surely not on Sunday night, no one's going to be there. So I remember walking into this pizza hut, and my agnostic good friend was sitting in the corner smoking a cigarette, and his mouth just dropped when I came to this churchy, happy people moving all the tables together. And I went over to him, and he, he, thought, they, he thought they were going to attack. They actually, he was like, oh, oh, what? I said, hey, I, I, I'm going to... I've decided to follow Jesus. And I got it out. It felt really good. And he goes, man, we can't talk about it now with all these people here. Like, he says, but let's, do, let's come back tomorrow night. So tomorrow, the next night I come back. And I think, this is really cool how God has made it so easy. Right? And then I look and he's brought, I felt like 100, I think it was about 12 uh, of my friends standing there, my girlfriend, ex-girlfriends, and said, and here's what they said. I'm like, hey, Dave, how are you doing? We're interested in Jesus. No, they said, what in the hell happened to you? And so then I sat there and literally, I mean, I am, my voice is like <laughs> trembling and I somehow blurted out, I love Jesus and I'm going to follow him. And they looked like, huh. And they all disappeared. And I remember thinking, on the way home though, because I spoke it, I could feel God. I like, oh, it's, it was so good. You know, I, I think that, and I've been doing this for a long time. What's funny is I'm 49 years into it, and, and I get to that point of stepping out because God prompts me in speaking or in demonstrating. Guess what? I feel that same pizza hut feeling. And now I've learned... This is a good sign. I've learned, I'm not sure what happened there, uh, but I'm not sure why that's back, being back it up. Uh, I've learned why, that, why that's actually a, uh, a good feeling because I realized, oh, I'm onto something here, right? And I've learned how to push through that, but that, the, the thing I'm still processing is like, oh, 
wow, what was that about, right? And so as I look at this, I realize that, you know, I've had lots, I've been in the Christian faith a long time, and I'm like, I'm understanding that, you know, there's these, there's the things of the kingdom that, that there's, you know, that they're supposed to do these things. You're supposed to share your faith. I've been told that all my life. And I've heard people tell me, you know, you, the reason you don't share your faith, you don't really love Jesus. <laughs> if you love Jesus, you share your faith. And I think, I do love Jesus. I just am scared to share my faith. I'm scared to speak it out. And uh, so I, and I've heard people talk about, it's my personality. For me, I'd worked a long time on bu- building. I've, I, I was, I've, Never been cool. I, was, I really wasn't cool back then. But I've learned how to look cool and try to act cool. And I worked a long time to just get to the barely the edge of not cool. And I kind of thought in my mind, like, this may ruin this, <laughs> which it did. Uh, but all those things are there. But what was it? What was it that was happening that made it so hard? Was it those things? I just had to psychologically get myself past those things. They're real. And I think the thing I'd say is the reason that it's difficult to both speak and to demonstrate the kingdom is because it is personal, but it's powerful. It's so powerful that you have a force against you that you will encounter to some degree every time. Because when we speak, when we proclaim the kingdom, when we demonstrate the kingdom, the kingdom expands and people move closer to Jesus. And so, you know, as we look at this, in Ephesians it says, As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sin in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world. And the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are are disobedient. For he has rescued you from the dominion of darkness and brought you into the kingdom of the son he loves. God has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into a new kingdom of Jesus, the son he loves. That's, the, that's our worldview. And what we have to understand is we are in a world that has competing kingdoms. You know, you can... When Jesus would talk about this, he would, he would talk about it and say, oh, you have... By the way, I'm your shepherd, but you also have someone else who's trying to become your shepherd, who's a thief. And he kills and kills, kills and destroys you. There's a tension here. He's looking for you to trust him, and I'm looking for you to trust me. He says, Jesus himself, all-powerful Jesus, said, now, the thief and the, and the, the, he calls him the prince of this world. Now, there'll be a time that he'll be dealt with, but Jesus says, right now, we're, we're living in this tension of two kingdoms. And as you think about this theologically, you don't have to go very far, but just to to realize you can spot this on a micro level, right? Just get honest. You know, you don't have to tell anybody right now. Just think about your heart. Don't you feel the battle? Like all the time of something pulling you one way and, and then God having another way. Don't you feel that battle inside? The two kingdoms in conflict, can't you identify with that's the explanation? That, you know, where it talks about in Ephesians that we think our, our struggles, these things are going down inside of us, this stuff that we're going through is flesh and blood, it's natural. No, it's not natural. It's supernatural. It's a struggle against authorities, against powers of this dark age, it says in Ephesians 6. It's a spiritual force of evil in the heavenly realm. We're struggling against this. This is our reality that we live in. And so... When they're in conflict, you have to realize you can see this on a micro level just by just, looking, just getting honest and looking at what goes on in your everyday life. But you also will notice that you can see it on a macro level as well. I mean, this is the world we live in. And if you think the world is heaven, you will have a hard time in this world. 
And if you think this world is hell, no one wants to be around you, and you won't, you won't have a very good time in this life. But quite honestly, when we have a right world world, we understand that there's this beauty of the world that is truly, we can see God in, right? Creation tells us, oh my goodness, this is God. You can look at some of those pictures and say, I can feel this is right and good, right? This, just this understanding of relationships and beauty and all those things, right? Humans who are created in God's image, we can spot that when we look around. But can't you also spot this? You just turn the news on and you just look around you of sickness, and distortion of sexuality, and bullying, and war, and abuse. Ref millions and millions of refugees leaving their country out of war, poverty, imprisonment, bondage, violence. Like, which is it? It's kingdoms in conflict. And we're living in a world of this, and God is saying, I want you to understand you can live in my kingdom while you're here in this kingdom. Now, as we look at this, you know, what do we do when we see this? Well, God tells us, here's what we do. We seek first his kingdom, not the world's kingdom, his kingdom, and not our righteousness, which if you're not in his, if you're not in his kingdom, you're seeking your righteousness. Pay attention to your heart. If you're not seeking it, but we seek his kingdom and his righteousness, and then we pray, and this is a daily prayer Jesus taught his disciples. We pray, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as, in, as it is in heaven. And when we pray that, God moves. So, here's what I want to ask. I want to start big picture. What happens when the kingdom comes? When we, what we pray as it is in heaven, the rightness of heaven, if it breaks into this world that we live in, what's that mean? I think in a big picture it means that God shows up, which means he is seen for who he is. And he acts on our behalf. He brings his kingdom, right? He brings the things of his kingdom. He brings his presence. He brings his nature, his character, his power, his love, all in those moments. Don't you love it when the kingdom comes? When you're clear on that spot in this middle of the war zone, you get this open field and you go, ah, this is who we're, this is the kingdom we're part of, right? So, here's I, so I had like after this, I thought, here's my question that I want to throw out actually to you. What have you experienced when the kingdom comes? When the kingdom is demonstrated when it comes, and I started having these different examples, I thought, why am I coming to these examples? we got a church, and many of you have experienced the kingdom coming. Okay? 15 seconds, close your eyes. Think about a time when you experience the kingdom coming in your life. Think about it. Okay, so we, are, we can practice some proclamation here. I'd like you to tell me, you got, I'll give you a, you can have a five second version, a 10 minute, not 10 minutes, 10 second version or a 30 second version. I'll go with any of them. I want to hear how you, what you experienced when the kingdom came personally. Peace. Describe that. What's that feel like? <laughs> In the middle of everything, right? Yeah. Pure joy. Pure, pure joy. Love. Forgiveness. Yeah. Good. Understanding. Understanding. I'd like to dare someone to share a particular incident they can share a little bit, if you can share it in a short amount of time. If it came to your mind, just share it. 
order. Okay? Menzi, explain it. I can pick on you. Explain it a little more. Good. That's the game you're coming. Had a plane flight you knew you needed to get to, and God just brought the money in. What else? I want to hear a couple stories. You guys have them. God did them. It wasn't you. Naomi, his love. You feel his love. So when you're just with him, you can feel him as if it's a person loving you, and you can feel it, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's so good. What else? A couple stories. Give me a couple more stories. Come on, Jeff. We were going through uh, an adoption process, and uh, I couldn't identify you know, the story. Talk as loud as you can just because you're Jeff, and I can ask you to do that. Go ahead. One more. I don't know. Two more. Three more. Okay, Carrie. Um, you know, I, I feel like it's really easy to think about how we create the kingdom in big moments in our life, but it's also small moments when, um, like, the friends in your family provide for you, and that's, that's key to the kingdom, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, when, um, when I have a baby, when I had it, um, mm -hmm. and people just shower us with meals and care for us, and that's, that's the kingdom. Because you can feel it came from more than them. Yes. Right. Susan. God's real. Jesus is real. He interacts with us. And honestly, maybe that story you didn't tell that you know, tell someone today. Just say, I want to just tell you the story I came up there. Say, hey, did you have a story that came to your mind? You know, because this, is, this helps us get a grasp. I mean, God is working in ways all the time, right? And sometimes it's kind of dramatic, and sometimes it's just as powerful, but a moment that you know God is in the room and he cares for you, sees you, right? And so in the vineyard, we've talked about this a lot because when the vineyard came in, we had a lot of emphasis on proclamation. And John Wimber, as he studied Scripture, he said, wait a second, where's the demonstration? In fact, John Wimber, was, who's the, one of the founders of the vineyard, started out it with Fuller with a uh, church growth and missionology class with uh, world missions. And... Uh, he actually would go over and say, why is the church exploding in these areas? And they just it would analyze it, and they say, because there is both proclamation and demonstration. There are people who are getting healed, who God is coming in power and presence, the gifts of the Spirit are being operated in, and there's explanation, and there's, it's back and forth. Both are happening at the same time. And this is what we see in Jesus' life, and this is what we see in the disciples' life. I mean, so it's a spot of when the spirit, when the kingdom comes, there's it may be a spot in which that we see, we have revelation. When you, if you're here and you don't know Jesus, you are already experiencing the kingdom. 
you can already feel this thing happening inside of you where God, Jesus is being revealed and you can tell there's a decision to be made and you're stirred up with that. That's the kingdom breaking in because he's showing you both your heart and who he is at the same time. We don't get there without Jesus. Without, we, don't, we don't come up that in our mind. This is something that flesh and blood does not reveal. God's doing that. And you need to know that is God doing that. Or in the same way as he's trying to communicate to you, he's doing this, he's breaking into spring revelation and light. He infills us with his spirit. We operate in the gifts of the spirit. I'll just say, not long, about two, uh, I don't know, eight weeks ago or so, I had pneumonia. I don't know if you guys knew that or not. And uh, it happened pretty quick, and I went in, and Saturday I was not able to, to get off the recliner. I just, I wanted to. Uh, they told me I could go as fast as I wanted, and I was trying to, but I couldn't get out of the recliner. They said, okay, well, a couple weeks before I get back on my feet. So I was not contagious. Katie was teaching on healing. So I thought, it seems logical I should go, but that's about how much faith I had. So I came, and as the teaching was going, I recognized how little faith I had for healing, which is kind of embarrassing when you're a vineyard pastor. Uh, so I went forward to repent of this and add on, and if God wants to heal me, that's fine. That's what I did. And when I went forward, Chris and Terry gathered around me, and all of a sudden, the King of God came. And I always know that because I cry. So I'm crying, you know, and I'm crying and coughing and hacking all over Terry, which is concerned. <laughs> So in the middle of us, I said, Terry, I'm not contagious, in between my sobs, so she would at least, maybe, but she had plenty of faith. So the reality is something happened big. I mean, I, I don't know, I've not experienced something like quite this. And it was just like, I felt like I had a shot into my chest. Now, I still had a little bit of a cough the next day, and I thought, okay, you know, you know, but I thought, wow, this is crazy. But then I recognized, I looked back and I thought, oh my gosh, because that day, Debbie was, as soon as I got home, she goes, okay, I'm, I'm, you can go to the bedroom or here because I know you take a nap. I, did you make it through? Because we thought I'd have to leave church. And I was up, went to intercessory prayer, went to, I stayed up till 12 that night. And I thought, well, maybe psychosomatic. I don't know I'm, how much faith I have. So the next day, I get up, and I said, let's go look for a car, Debbie. She said, what? And I said, I think I can do that. I don't feel it. I just have a tiny cough. And so I went, we, we bought a car that day, which... It's quite exhausting. Then I came home, all right. Next day, I had this idea. I need mulch. <laughs> Debbie made sure I went to, she said, Dave, are you sure? I mean, the doctor said you, I said, I, I feel pretty good. <laughs> so I went to, blow, I went to uh, Menards because they load it for you. I thought that was at least wise, right? <laughs> they weren't there. It's hot. Big pile. I started pulling the bisque clean off. 22 bags of mulch later. I, I pull off and Debbie goes, you What? And so then we went back home. I unloaded it. My neighbor had heard me coughing from across the street. She ran over in her good clothes and started helping. What are you doing? What are you doing? So I, I'm okay. You know? And uh, so God healed me, right? And it came because someone, you know, and that's because Chris is so pure and holy and perfect, and so is Terry. No, that's nothing to do with it. They, they just got to be used. And it, it's like, it's also this place, it's, 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 more, it's look at Jesus, and when he would interact, God's kingdom would come through, right? You don't think God's kingdom came through when those kids got up on his lap, or when he spoke to that woman who's caught in adultery, or when he fed the 5,000, or when he had dinner with Zacchaeus? I, I just, it's just there all the time. Speaking about the kingdom, demonstrating the kingdom. And so, yes. <laughs> I like this. <laughs> All right, that's good. I like those kind of things. Usually. No, good. I'll just.
Mm -hmm. You know, um, and we thought it's going to be like another week and a half in the hospital, blah, 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 but it's shortened dramatically. Mm -hmm. And uh, different people from different people in the church in, the, in this last couple of hours made an order, you know, answered the call. Help me have order, yeah. you know, at peace. Right. He saw what you needed. Physically, emotionally, spiritually. And part of that was him directly. You can almost say, but you know there's people there that did something in that process. It came through them. Thanks, Josie, for sharing that. Now, this... Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You know, this is really what we see over and over. Proclamation, demonstration, words and works, telling and showing. That's it. And simply doing that. You don't have to do it very well. You just have to do it, and it works. Speaking from your heart of the goodness of God as kingdom. And then stepping out in those things that God asks you to do for his glory. John Wimber said, he called us as kingdom people doing the stuff of proclamation and demonstration. To do only half of what we've been called into and not a complete, is not a complete gospel. And we must do all of what God's placed on us. If we aren't doing the works of the kingdom, the message is not complete, isn't complete. When Jesus went through the towns and the villages teaching the synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, his fellow workers, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Isn't that interesting? Jesus does this all the time. He's going around, wherever he goes, he's speaking about who God is in the kingdom. And then he's doing the works of the kingdom. We have to realize that when Jesus was on this earth, he was showing us, that's why he took on humanity fully, how to be a human and live in the kingdom. This is to show us we are to be like Jesus which means that we do the things of Jesus. And it's interesting here because here he finds himself looking through the eyes of the kingdom at the people, and what he could see is they're not doing well. I'm telling you, when you see what's happening under the surface, even in America with all our distractions and all our good looks and all our stuff and all our distractions, people aren't doing well. They're, they're, they're in trouble. They're, they're helpless. They're harassed. They're, they're not doing well. And they're trying to hold up in their own righteousness. And they're under a dominion. And yet when Jesus says we need more help, he didn't say come out of the sky, come stronger. He said, here's what I want you to do. Pray that God will send more people into one another's lives. <laughs> to the harvest field of the, of the people who are, are helpless and harassed, pray that they will understand that they are called to do the proclamation and the demonstration of the kingdom. That's us. This is what God, if you know Jesus, this is what God's inviting you. If you're thinking about knowing Jesus, after you say yes to Jesus, you get to start experiencing this. That's what he wants to do. He wants to have you, God come through you to people in a way that is beyond what your capability is. Now, 
And the thing I'd say about this is it's like, it's not for the certain groups of people. <laughs> it's, it happens, it's a gift, it's a place of grace. And so as you look at this whole thing of understanding this, it's by God's grace and his strength and for his glory, not our own. And when you do that, we can really cut loose on it because it's not about us and it's not because of us. It's because God has given us his spirit and has given us the task and will back us up by his kingdom. And we can be pretty wacky, and he still does that. We can be pretty much our human selves, and he does that. We can be just all of our stuff, and he'll still do that. And I love what it says, and Peter says, it says, each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. Each of you. That includes each of you. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so in the strength God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. You know, when Terry and Chris prayed for me, I had no inclination to worship them. <laughs> But I had a lot of inclination to worship God. And we understand this is what we're doing. We're helping people connect to Jesus. We're, we're the answer to the prayer that Jesus was saying, have the disciples pray. But the thing about it is, it's really interesting, is God wants to understand, and what will motivate us to do this is understand it's, it's him, not us. Paul puts it this way, he says, but we have this treasure in jars of clay to show his surpassing power is from God and not from us. Your humanity makes it better. It communicates his grace, his mercy better. You say, I'm all whacked out, I'm still struggling. You're still a citizen of the kingdom and God wants to use you. God wants to come through you. And sometimes, and it is, it is really this truth, I love what you we're saying about the smaller parts. It's understanding this is all the time. And there'll be parts where God wants to have you pray for someone and they receive Jesus. Another time, you pray for somebody and they're healed or delivered of a dark spirit that has been harassing them all their life or give you a prophetic word. That is normative. It should be normative, but it also means you have a different way of putting your kids to bed because the kingdom can come in that bedroom as you speak affirmation and speak things to their heart. It changes the way you approach your job. It causes you to realize, I can have a conversation with a neighbor who just went through a divorce and something bigger than me being just nice comes through. Right? It, 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 it allows you to understand that whatever you say, whatever you do, you can do in, in the strength of Jesus. Praying, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. All right. Worship team, you can come.